Okay, I'm back on my new account, or my newer account. We're closing in on four months on this account. I think today is day 110, so I'm not sure if that still classifies as a new account. Regardless, there have been some changes to this account. So on my last video, someone was asking me if I was planning on pulling for Lingxia, and after giving it some thought, I figured, you know what? Because I'm invested into the Firefly team on this account, and because I want to use Gallagher with Robin so that he can do the quid pro quo spam, I figured it was worth it to go for Lingxia. And I was also guaranteed, because if you remember in my last video or the video before, I was trying to pull for Fei Xiao, and then I ended up getting Japard. So I had a guarantee for Lingxia, and I ended up getting her around 35 wishes. So I now have myself a Lingxia. I put her on this free-to-play light cone that I got from the MOC store. And her traces are as high as I can get them in this time frame. Her relics were mostly Firefly hand-me-downs. So this used to be on Firefly, this used to be on Firefly, and this used to be on Firefly. And then I gave her this healing bonus to round out the set, and then these two. So my Lingxia is as built as I can get her right now. Other changes to this team have been Firefly used to be on a speed boot, so she used to have 165 speed. But I switched it to an attack boot, and I found that that worked better for me. So now her relics look like this. This is a very good piece. Ideally, more into break effect would have been nice. This is another decent piece, except the crit damage is kind of a useless roll. Here, the crit damage is another useless roll. And this is a very good piece. I like this piece here. Here is also a pretty good piece. And then this one can be better, but you know what? I'll take it. So she is sitting now at 2800 attack, 143 speed and 258 break effect E0 so Firefly I think is in a good spot she's sitting around top 4% on Zilla land Ron May was another one who saw quite a few changes to her I ended up switching relics around to get her also up to around 257 break effect and she I don't know what level her traces were before but I've got her up to 999 Ideally, this should be 10 10 10, but like I said, I'm limited on Trailblaze power. And then these are her relics. And the last one is Harmony main character. He is around 170 break effect. Still a level 70 light cone. It's not worth my resources right now to get this up. I want this to be leveled up, but again, low on resources. And these are his relics. He is E6 because I play the game. So that's my upgraded Firefly team, and with that team, I do think it might be possible to zero cycle now. MLC recently got a reset, and this is the new first half of Floor 12, which is pretty much tailor-made for Firefly, in my opinion. I think with this team now, zero cycling this is fully possible. So I'm going to use everyone's technique before we enter battle, which is really nice because with Gallagher, you couldn't actually use Gallagher's technique if you wanted to use Fireflies. So this way with Linksha, it just maximizes everyone's kit because everyone gets to use their technique. Which is something I like. It's not a huge deal, but... Okay, I'm going to probably... Firefly E this guy. And then break them all. One million damage. Not bad, not bad. Auto this guy. Auto him again. Okay, now Firefly should be able to kill these guys off. Alright, not bad. So we have a lot of skill points. I'm gonna pop. HMC alt here because I'm about to break everyone here and he's gonna get energy back. Then I'm gonna skill with Lingxia. I'm holding her ultimate for the next phase when someone gets stunned. Build a few more skill points because Firefly can kill them off here. Alright now we just don't want Lingxia to be stunned because Lingxia has to cleanse whoever does get stunned. So not Lingxia please. Alright, is Ronmei. It's fine. 
We pop Link's just alt. We free run May from the shackles. And then we do heavy break. Okay. If everything goes accordingly, this attack should kill kill them off. 500 break effect. All right, 500 break effect. Please kill them off here. No, six, seven percent. Okay, we have to restart. Okay, I still think it's doable, but I'm not sure what has to go right. I'm pretty sure I'm playing the first bit pretty optimal. I don't know what else I can change. Build-wise, there's not much I can change except wait until I can level up everyone's traces. In terms of combat, I actually don't know what I can optimize in terms of turn order and stuff. Okay, this time I hit a million damage. I don't know why. But... I'll probably... Make sure I can kill off some of these. Okay. So we're sitting on very good skill points. Okay, okay, so far so good. Okay, this is all standard. We can get here consistently. The problem is from here, I don't know what I need to take them down. Oh, was it because I needed that to happen? Oh, wait, Firefly resisted it, but I'm probably going to still... Oh, maybe I needed that to happen. Yeah, wait, that makes sense. That makes sense. So I guess the Link had to be hit first, so I... It triggers her passive. Oh, so there is RNG involved. I, I see, I see. Okay, wait, now this... This is where we do the final blow with our 500 break effect Firefly. Okay, there we go, there we go. Zero cycle. Because we had to have Lingxia get hit to proc the passive. But we did it, we did it. We zero cycled within four months of this account while being able to cl full clear the entire thing. So like it wasn't just because I fully invested into one team. It was be it was like me juggling a bunch of things and then we ended up zero cycling. You could probably zero cycle within like the first month of playing if we just hyper focus one team. But like I had to build up a bunch of units to also do pure fiction and apocalyptic shadow. So a little rundown of where my account is sitting at in terms of end game because I do need to come clean I could not full clear the current pre fiction or the apocalyptic shadow. I was able to full clear the last pre fiction where Clara was actually viable, but in this one, because there's the dino side, it was really, really hard for me to clear this first half. So I, I, I couldn't even get 20k here. I needed to get 20k here so I could fish for a 40k second half. But if I can't even reach 20k on the first half, there's no point in me continuing to try for a 40k because I'll never hit the 60k so I'll try a bit more to see if I can get 20k on this side but it, it doesn't seem too possible at the moment as for apocalyptic shadow I'm probably gonna release a video about my struggles with Clara here's a summary of my annoyance with Clara Clara relies on being hit a lot to deal damage right and to be hit someone needs to attack her in this game mode, you have one boss and a bunch of adds. The adds don't attack. And you have to kill the adds before you can damage the boss. And then you have to break the boss to get like this damage window to continue pummeling him down, right? So before you kill the adds, the only thing that's attacking your Clara is the boss. And then when the boss attacks Clara, Clara will then retaliate by countering the boss. But the boss is immune to damage before you break the adds, so it won't take damage anyways. And then when you finally break the adds, and you break the boss, that's when you can start dealing damage to it. But 
the boss is broken, so he's not acting, so he's not attacking your Clara, so Clara can't deal damage, and so it, the whole thing doesn't work. It was very, very upsetting when I was trying to use Clara in this game mode, and because she's just so bad in this game mode, I can't fully recommend her as one of your first units to build, because I believe you should build units that work in every game mode, right? Firefly sort of struggles in Pure Fiction, but because of Lingsha, because of Himiko, it's actually possible to get a comfortable 30k even with Firefly. And in Apocalyptic Shadow, Firefly works really, really good because she does so much damage when enemies are weakness broken. And in Forgotten Hall, in Memory Chaos, Firefly is also really, really good. So Firefly is good in all three game modes, right? She might struggle a little bit in Pure Fiction, but she is propped up by Lingsha and Himiko. I just don't see where Clara excels in this game mode. Maybe, maybe the current rotation just doesn't suit her. But man, it was so frustrating using her. That's enough ranting. I'll probably explore those thoughts further in a separate video. Right now, I want to talk a little bit about where this account is going in the future. When my account hits 120 days, so the four month mark, I will be doing an account review. So I'll go over my account and I'll go over what I think worked, what I think didn't work. If I were to do this again, what would I change? And then after that is where I'm not entirely sure what I should do. My goal with this account was to clear MOC. And now I've even managed to zero cycle it. So that's really, really cool. Going forward in 2.6, Rappa and DHL, I'm definitely skipping both of them. In 2.7, Sunday and Tingyun or Fugue, I don't know if I'm going to be pulling for them, right? Because the only reason I'll pull for Fugue is for my Firefly team. But this seems already pretty complete in my eyes. I don't know who she would replace, or if I even need to replace anyone on this team. Even if I pull for Fugue, she probably wouldn't replace anyone, and so I'm probably skipping Fugue. And then with Sunday, I don't know. He seems like a strong character, but he's a support, right? And what I'm looking for now is a DPS, not a support, because I have this team that's complete, which means Fugue isn't really necessary, because this team hasn't been struggling for me, so I don't really see the need to upgrade. And then my other team, can be a Robin Sparkle team or just like a Robin Gallagher team. Just someone that would work with Robin. And basically that means I need a DPS character, a, a DPS that replaces Clara. So because of that, I'm probably skipping 2.6 and 2.7, which means there's probably not a lot of content for me to create on this account. So what I think I'm gonna do with this account going forward is play this account on the side, farm up Stellar Jades, and then I can go one of two ways. I can use this account to pull for characters I otherwise would have skipped on my main account because I'm a free to play player so I have to skip a lot of characters or else it's impossible for me to get the ones I want and because of that a lot of the times I can't use certain characters and I just can't really create much content on them but if I have a second account that can pull for the characters I skip then I'll still be able to build and test certain characters or I could play this account the same way I play my main account where I only go for characters that will benefit the account specifically, which means I'll probably be waiting for the next DPS character that works with Robin and then going all in on them and trying to get E2S1 or something. I don't know. I feel like I've reached a point where this series has come to an end. There is no way I'm doing this again because the amount of story, event, and grinding required was a lot. and. With me playing two accounts, it, it just gets draining after a while because I actually play these accounts, right? I don't have an account manager that does everything for me. I do play the game. I do play these accounts. And I don't think I can handle another one. I personally think it'll be more fun if I play this as my second main and go all in on characters that I really, really like, but that don't fit on my main account. So for example, my main account doesn't play too heavily into the Super Break playstyle, it doesn't have any DOT characters, and I don't think I'll be going for the summon meta on my main account, unless the summon meta directly implicates Blade. Like if Farina was imported into the game as a summon unit, and she buffs Blade, that's the only reason I would dip my toes into the summon meta on my main account. But on this account, I can see myself going for the summon meta, and then that could be an a avenue I go down. It might be fun to have like a super break on one side and then a summon meta on the other side. So that that's where my head is at at the moment. I've had a lot of fun doing this journey with all of you. 
my main account i started it before i was a youtuber so so a lot of people didn't get to hear my decision making and, and why i pulled for certain units but this account the inception to now has all been documented on youtube so i can show how i play this game as a free-to-play player and then basically share my play style with all of you and especially because there's not a lot of free-to-play perspectives on on youtube a lot of the big content creators they spend a lot of money on the game and that's i'm not saying that that's bad but i just think they have a skewed perception of free-to-play and sometimes it annoys me when they make assumptions about free-to-play without actually being a free-to-play player anyways i feel like i'm starting to repeat myself so i'm ending the video here stay tuned for my account review if you're interested if you've been following this series you probably already know where my account currently sits but Maybe in a week there'll be a surprise. I don't know.